Ready? Hello and welcome to another episode of Rich Hang's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. Uh, this week's guests are Brendan Burns and Craig Quatermain. It's a, we're doing a very exciting show called Race Off, which you must go and see. If you are at the Edinburgh Fringe, uh, check out their de- details, Race Off. I'm also at the Edinburgh Fringe. You can see my show, Oh Frig, I'm 50, at Pleasance 1 at 7.30 every night. I'm also doing three Count uh Richard Herring's Edinburgh Fringe podcasts which we will be putting out over the next few weeks uh, instead of this, and then we'll be back uh, to Less Square Theatre Podcast time. Uh, I am on at the, I think it's called the Grand Theatre, because that's what, the, oh, it's the Grand Hall at the Newtown Theatre. It's at 1.50pm on the 4th, 11th and 18th of August. On the 4th of August, I will be talking to the Doug Anthony All-Stars, which you cannot beat that. Uh, so do book ahead. Both of those shows are selling quite well, but there are tickets for every performance as I speak, because both of them are in quite big theatres. Anyway, let's sit back and relax. You can also buy emergency questions, gofasterstrike.com. It's back in stock. Uh, let's sit back and relax and listen to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a man who was in the last week taking a trip to the Taj Mahal just for his own purposes. <laughs> it's Richard Herring! <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Welcome to a further episode of Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. I was down uh, recording of uh, the TV show this morning with Richard Not Judy the other day, and um, a lot of cool, a lot of very cool kids hanging out down there. Not only did they call their show to Wunrunjer, which is wrong because it's Tum Wunrunjer, so I don't know why they did that. They also called this Rahulas. So I don't know. That's, that's gonna come. They were so cool, the kids at, at that show. <laughs> yeah, very, it was a very cultish show. Not many people knew about it. So um, yeah, so I'm living in the countryside now. I commuted in. Uh, it's, it's actually all right. I li- I'm living in Hertfordshire. I'm actually living with my in-laws at the moment because the house we're moving into isn't ready, but we had to move our stuff out of our house because the next people would have been annoyed. Uh, so <laughs> that's how it works. It's unfair, isn't it? Uh, and so, uh, but it's quite good. I, I, you know, I'm Les Dawson lied to me. I like living with my in-laws. My, my mother-in-law makes us food every meal time, and I get to sleep in in the morning, and they look after the baby. It's great. I'm, I'm, th- I'm just going to stay there, I think. <laughs> but it's nice. It's nice coming in on the train. It's lovely, and but it's scary coming back to London now, isn't it? With all the terrorism and don't like being here in the capital. Terrorism and all sorts of acid attacks, isn't it? It's all happening down here. So thank God I live in the countryside. Everyone's gone very quiet and upset. <laughs> I thought I was living in London three days ago. I was, that was a sort of joke I was going for there. I'm not really trying to remind you that your lives are in danger, everywhere. <laughs> and your lives are your faces. Uh, so. Uh, Let's crack straight on. Uh, so I think there'll be more of this sort of embarrassment coming up and awkwardness. Uh, so my, I've got two guests uh, this week. One of my guests is probably best known as playing Gordon Irwin in the film Peacock Season. Yeah. And the other one is probably best known for making the Raw Comedy Final and literally doing nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing. <laughs> I could choose. It's Brendan Burns and Craig Quartermain, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Come in. Sit down. Hey, Richie. How are you doing? Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. It's Brendan Burns. Hey, thanks for having us back. I should have warned you, they're both Australian. <laughs> <laughs> I love how okay you are with doing that, by the way. It's just a lady at the back. Of, Ugh. Ugh. It's probably going to speak. <laughs> we, we're, we're, you know, we're all good friends now after everything. That that's is happened. very true. I would, don't think I'd have half my listeners without you. Oh. This is true, actually. Richard has been like one of our greatest supporters, I guess. Absolutely. And like you said, I, I probably really shouldn't be here. I'm, <laughs> I'm like three years in and I'm very new. And there's amazing people that have been on the show and there's a lot of great acts that haven't been on yet, and they've been probably grinding it out and working much harder, but um, uh, fuck them. 
<laughs> yeah. I do love it. <laughs> like, that's what he does every time is he like goes through people's CV and finds their most embarrassing credit. <laughs> the reason we're cracking up is... It's Craig's only credit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a pretty good one. It is a pretty good one. So, should we explain a little bit about how you two met? And sure. What's going on and who you are? Uh, well, we, I guess... We know, uh, you, we know you a little bit, Brendan. Uh, yeah, not so much. Uh, I, I guess I suppose you, you, you're used to more household names on... Um, on this on both our accounts. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> it's, it's Craig and I are kind of a reluctant. We are the first double act of our kind in history. Uh, there you go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a gay love affair between a, a man who's much too old for the other man. Is that? Right? <laughs> no, there's anything wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. I'm all. I'm all for it. Uh, we are. We are exploiting. Uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> Explore. Are you Being exploiting a, a 46 year old white man? <laughs> well, let's be honest, uh, Brendan needed a plot device and I needed a leg up in the industry. <laughs> and uh, we, we are bringing our show uh, Race Off to Edinburgh. Yeah. Uh, we are discussing the dynamic between Indigenous Australians and whatever Brendan is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, in fairness, <laughs> in fairness, <laughs> the, you did let a lot of tension out of the room while uh, a lot of English people were trying to work out what the fuck you are <laughs> if you're wondering about the Australian black-white dynamic and uh, many of you may be going you know what, I don't think I've ever seen or met an indigenous Australian there's a reason for that and we keep very quiet about it <laughs> there's not many left <laughs> A little bit of a genocide. <laughs> oh, by the way, and it was you that did it. <laughs> I was in prison at the time. <laughs> yeah, Look well, how uncomfortable he is! <laughs> I'm always uncomfortable. <laughs> you know Michael Portillo, mate. Don't get above yourself. So it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, so... so well, how did, you, how did you meet each other? Uh, it was actually through doing my podcast. I do a show called Dumb White Guy. And I am on the international scene, I guess you call it that. And I often find myself... I, I travel around the world and I do shows and, and interview comedians of different sexual, uh, sexuality, ethnicity and gender. And I ask awkward racial, sexual, gender questions. Dumb white guy questions, I guess. And, uh, and I try and put up sets where I'm the ethnic minority in the room. And then I was in my uh, hometown and I uh, was asking around. And I said, is there like a, you know, I thought I'm a bit of a pussy if I don't, you know, if I don't address the dynamic in my own backyard as excruciatingly awkward as it is, see? Right. <laughs> and uh, so I asked a bunch of comics in my hometown, like, you know, is there an indigenous comedian? And everyone went, oh, You've got to meet Greg Quartermain. Oh, you got to meet, you're going to love this guy. He's got, you know, you two are going to get on great. He's got jokes that make white people really uncomfortable. <laughs> and he's got a massive chip on his shoulder. <laughs> and I was like, how the fuck is that a compliment to either one of us? <laughs> and uh, then it's interesting that, uh, that we come from a background where the dynamic is so toxic that people can't fathom serendipity because everyone was right we we hit it off uh really really well and then he was a guest on my show which you saw and, yep. and we we're a great champion of thank you and uh and then my directors uh the guys that directed uh, a, a show i did about 10 years ago called so i suppose it's offensive now uh we were on the free fringe and everyone said their favorite bit was the the, the free fringe by the way is that the, you do your show and at the end you stand there with a the bucket and that's how you get paid it's basically really fancy begging and uh, at the very end, Craig and I were on stage together uh, and everyone said that was their favourite bit when we were kind of shitting on each other. It, was, it wasn't that uh, romantic. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I, I was suspicious as fuck of Brendan when he came. Because you've got to understand, like, back home in Australia, there's no benefit to having an Indigenous person involved in any of your projects. There really isn't. Uh, it's usually really tokenistic. Uh, you get government grants. For having us involved in, um, <laughs> I've, I had a half-filled room. You're hardly a cash cow. Yeah. 
Fucking fancy pants over here. <laughs> yeah, well, th- th- that's the thing, though. But I also had, like, an inherited suspicion of white people. Like, I had the stuff I've developed over 35 years and also have the stuff from my grandparents and my parents. When someone like Brendan came to the front door, it was usually to take the children. <laughs> 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 and the, the, good, the great part for me Toughen is, up cunts, it's going to get so much worse <laughs> And those are the sort of jokes that actually made us click Because, you know, Brennan's, Brennan's not exactly um, cuddly <laughs> and, and I think that, yeah, just watching what I do on stage is very much Because there's a lot of unspoken tension it, uh, We were talking about this backstage That what I love about the UK, well, in London anyway It's really evident that it is a really multicultural city There's... Class, you're classist as fuck. Yeah. But as far as race and um, multiculturalism... Fucking hell, you set fire to your poor people. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the point of that joke isn't yay, Grenfell. <laughs> Pretty sure the point of that joke was boo, classism. <laughs> Maybe don't cover your poor people's buildings in flammable clinic. How about that, cunt? <laughs> oh my god, I'm doing it again, aren't I? Apart Sorry, we can that. Was I like you mate. said again, like you ever stop. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, 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 like there's the a gap. Of, yeah, <laughs> our writing process during the course of this show, right, is because uh, also, like, like you said, to you, we're just two Aussies, right? Yeah. And this is very hard for you to fathom, but and, and that's like uh, very strange for Craig to accept because where we're from, I'm posh. <laughs> see, see, I fucking told you, your fellow scum, mate, your fellow convict scum, you don't get any fucking license. <laughs> Which, by the way, he's owed more than anyone when it comes to comic license. No one can talk more shit uh, than an Indigenous Australian. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's some little comedy club in the Amazon. <laughs> some fucking some bloke dude. with a plate in his lip. That's Africa, dude. <laughs> this is essentially the show. Yeah, but I, 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 get I mean, maybe... Is that fucking bloke at his plate with his lip going, those fucking nose boner cunts, what the fucks? That fucking head, fancy ivory shit. I've got a lip... I've got a plate me lip made of clay. We're roughing it. <laughs> See, look how uncomfortable they are. I don't know. I don't know how many because I've been to Australia and I've been I've been to the comedy circuit and I've but then I've also driven uh, to Uluru or As Rock as you will call it. No, I don't. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> no, I really don't. I really don't. <laughs> and uh, you know, and the, you get out of the cities. Wait, 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 wait. Are you honestly trying to say that historically it's Australians that turn up to place? and claim it discovered <laughs> and give it an Anglo-Saxon name? <laughs> that was us, was it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Must have taken a while to get to the middle, so by the time you got to the middle, you were Australians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. You were okay with that one, weren't you? Ooh, that was all right. There, there is a lot of laughing in the hands, I'm noticing, <laughs> at the moment. It's like, <laughs> but it's, 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 a, it's a surprise. Well, I, in 1997, I did the Adelaide Festival, and then me and Phil Granchy from Modern Problems in Science drove to the centre of Australia. Oh, good for you. And uh, Way too many people don't do that. Yeah, yeah. It was, but it was amazing, right? So it's a, it's a long, long journey. It's a big, big Yeah, place. yeah, break, yeah. And, but also, you're just so surprised. Having been in the city where I think you're saying, you know, you wouldn't really see... Anyone except white Australians, really? That is in the eastern states. Yeah. Which, put a pin in that. Ask us a question okay, about that all right. later. But as you, go, as you go through Australia, you know, yep. you come across these little villages and townships and, and the Aborigine guys, these indigenous guys are sitting out the back and aren't allowed in the bars. I don't know if this is still how it was, but this is how it was in the 1990s. Yes. You're going to go, why aren't they drinking in the bar? And they go, they're not allowed to go in the bar. Yeah. yeah the, the they're white called Australians. animal bars, in, yeah. uh, colloquially. Yeah, and also like it's this is within my lifetime as well. Is like uh, uh, up until 1974, you got in more trouble for shooting a horse, and people want to believe what they want to believe as well. So you know, so when I go to Craig's house and I'm a little bit racially awkward, it's kind of the only thing I'm entitled to <laughs> is racial awkwardness, because maybe there's just a few too many men my age just a little bit too overconfident. 
around this issue? Yeah. Trepidation, probably the right thing. Well, the thing is, though, that, that, that tension... Well, basically, if people got any more enlightened or educated, my shit wouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to start a comedy career. I don't need people getting fucking work now. Like, just wait a few years. Oh, those woke I mean... cunts. Don't get me started on them. <laughs> or woke. Really, we're all in the dark, aren't we, you fucker? <laughs> but it's... it's... It was, it was, it was, like, <laughs> you see why we need to be a double act? It's because I'm not immediately likeable. <laughs> and I have one credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. What, what, um, what towns, was there anything that kind of caught you out on that drive? I just, I, I, I mean, all of, I mean, all of that stuff, you know, drive and, and only talk, you only talk to white guys, I guess, and, you know, and it was... And we were driving fast, and so we were just driving through. We sort of saw it, saw it, and we just couldn't believe it. And then getting to Uluru, and it's you know, it's a very holy place for the the, the indigenous people there. Punjara and, and Punjara people. Yeah, and uh, and you're not. They don't want people to walk on it, and and, the, right. and then but then everyone just but what, goes but and walks on and, it. And you've been told. You t- you, what was your reaction when you said, don't walk on it? Did you just go, yeah, cool, fair enough? Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. You know what the Australian reaction is? <laughs> well, how's that racist, mate? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Rather than actually accept people's uh, word on it, it's like, oh, you're trying to tell me what to do. Yeah. And... Yeah, that's that is, it's really common and it's stark. For, like, I'm in a weird position because I'm light-skinned, straight head. I get a lot of people critiquing my, my face pretty much like I'm not holding up my end of the bargain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting... <laughs> I go, mate, I hear you're indigenous, yeah. but what, what, what's all this about? <laughs> mate, that's exactly <laughs> what it put is. put some effort in, will you? I know. I, I'm getting to that point now, though, when people uh, ask me about the straight hair, the light skin. I was like, uh, you know, just one of the lucky ones, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just fucking... You just get over it. But um, I'm, ca- I'm caught in that position where I know what people really think because they'll just assume I'm a handy Greek plumber or some shit. <laughs> and... <laughs> And just let it all out in those sort of towns yeah. in particular. Because there's a, a massive divide because the, the, the people, that, they're still Wait quite... Wait a minute. Did you say handy Greek plumber? Did you say the people think you're Mario? Oh, well, you want to read it? Here comes Craig. Well, he's first of all, he's Italian. Pie. Mario's Italian. Is he? Yeah, they don't all look the same, mate. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, shit! You're racist against white people now, is this? <laughs> oh, fucking don't get me started on those cunts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Pasty white motherfuckers. It, oh, just saying that it, uh, in, outside the city, it's a lot easier to divide people because yeah. there's a lot more tribal, <laughs> tribal people. You know, uh, only been a part of Australian society for less than 50 years. Uh, my, my grandparents were all, uh, grew up on missions. They weren't. All, my grandmother had to have papers before she could walk across the city of Perth, which is where we're from. I mean, I'm 35. That's this is not that long ago. No. And my parents had black and white. Um, oh, you have to explain what missions are, by the way. Ah, sorry. Missions are basically the equivalent of Native American reservations. So basically, you know, don't live here. Fuck off out there. Yeah. Is basically yeah. what, what uh, communities were. So it's not that far removed. And um, yeah, the tension, like. The Australian, we're, we're a huge inconvenience to the Australian narrative. You know, everyone thinks it was like some boats landed, World War Two happened, and fucking <laughs> Hugh Jackman washed himself, and that was it. <laughs> that's, what, that's legitimately what people think. <laughs> yeah, and the Hugh story. Jackman <laughs> washed himself. <laughs> and by the way, that is exactly the heris- history curriculum I grew up with. Yeah. <laughs> right, first some boats landed, and then <clears throat> woo. Uh, then Hugh Jackman washed himself. <laughs> Sir, wasn't there? Don't be a faggot, Burns. Asking questions and shit. Did you cause a bit of controversy on Australia Day by questioning Australia Day uh, on TV? Oh, yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've never really celebrated Australia Day. I've never really been into it very much. And a lot of my British friends, it's not like I'm being phony or anything about it, but when people go, why don't you? And I'm like, well, it's not like Germans have an Auschwitz anniversary. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) See what I mean? It's completely different here as well. They just like, they they really do go like, I am not reading the subtext (laughs) in anything that grubby convict does. 
I don't care how much the Oxbridge boy vouches for him. I refuse to look at nuance in anything this fucking didgeridoo blowing fucking scumbag does. I'm doing it, I'm doing it though. It's, when we're writing, and like in England sometimes, I will address an audience with, I like... Anger? Yeah. <laughs> but, because uh, you know, Craig's right, everything here is like about class. And, but I just, I, I'm a petulant man, I refuse to soften my accent, just to be accepted. And, uh, but sometimes in our writing process, that means that I will uh, spend time attacking a crowd for what I think they're thinking, because of experience dictates quite often that British people are, like, they hold in a lot of stuff in terms of xenophobia and race and racial tension, but it's, you still call yourselves Great Britain. Right, you're, you're, you're racist as fuck. Uh, you're xenophobic as fuck. There's a crazy white lady on your money who thinks she was appointed by God. And so, but sometimes that will come out before a crowd has done anything to prove that. Yeah. So I make the mistake of just opening. <laughs> with just, fuck you! You're more racist than me! And they're like, you haven't even said good evening yet. Like... <laughs> It's hard to do your first joke following that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're here to fix racism in an hour. Here's everything wrong with it. I'm the world's least racist person. You're more than me. It's like that joke about codependency or uh, it's, I think it's like a, 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 an addict's joke or something like that. It's a, basically a codependent addict. A codependent addict, right, is, uh, is go to, he goes to Boris, his next door neighbour's lawnmower. Right, and he goes, I'm going to go over next door and borrow Tom's lawnmower. Uh, as a matter of fact, I saw him out just there the other day, actually. Uh, he was uh, mowing his lawn, but oh, he was only half finished. Oh, right, so you know what? He might not uh, be willing to lend it to me straight away because he hasn't finished his lawn. But, but wait a minute, hang on. He's still got my clippers from last August. When I think about it, and I even saw him in the high street like two weeks ago. And he didn't even bring it up. He's just never going to lend me the lawnmower. And then by the time he gets to his neighbour's front door, he just goes, you know what, Tom? Fuck you <laughs> and your lawnmower. <laughs> and basically, that's our writing process. <laughs> is I come up with stuff, and then Craig has to go, they haven't done any of this, Brendan. <laughs> Calm down. But I, well, the show I saw where you were not a double act, where you were doing two separate acts, which is that is right. The first that time I saw Craig it. Craig was the closer. Yeah, yeah. But you're still, you know, I, I I saw you and Bridget Christie in the same week, and um, Bridget Christie's show is is brilliant as well. But was in a big full audience, and and she was talking to lots of people who agreed with her about stuff, and she was still managed to make it interesting. Your show was not. So in I, a, I can cope with another yeah, yeah. comic having no, a good show. No, but she's yeah, no, <laughs> but she's. Did you know? But she's like, very. She was good as well. Yeah, yeah, no, no. yeah. I but noticed that he said a full audience. Yeah, that's but the part. She, I oh, that was the bit. All oh, right. Yeah, but she's been. You know, her, that um, show got very. You know, got got awards and and reviews and stuff. This your show, I think, was equally challenging and interesting, and and you know, well, thank you very were, much. And and I think you're right that you haven't got. You know, I think there's a there is a snobbishness because I think you're challenging. What I love about your show is you'll say a lot of controversial... Your, your set of, of your show that I've seen is you'll say a lot of controversial stuff, but then you're also challenging the preconceptions and the uh, and what people in the audience think, which is a lot, a lot of comedians. I'm not saying Bridget, I'm saying lots of other comedians will just say the stuff they know the audience is going to like. But you will challenge liberalism as much as bigotism, uh, bigotry and racism. You're, you're, tra you're challenging the people in the audience with what you're saying, right? I, which I think you're both doing. I think I, I have a chip on my shoulder. My biggest chip is snobbery. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm an Australian that does comedy in England. Yeah. Tend to encounter it quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, so that, to me, is a form of covert bigotry. And it's not that I, I challenge liberalism. It's so much that there is a subtle, like, there is a subtle form of covert bigotry of this is one of the, like, only India has a greater sense of hierarchy than the UK, <laughs> right? And uh, India is one of the most classist place you, places you'll ever go to. And any Indian in the room will go, fucking, he's fucking right. Fucking, yeah, 
I don't think he's scum. Right? Uh, uh, but yet, even now, like, you can hear people going like, whoa, he's talking about another culture, and is that punching down? And you're like, that's the bigoted bit. Because if you go to India and they do jokes about Great Britain, we all think about punching up and punching down. But somehow, in this country, people can't fathom the notion of punching sideways. <laughs> right? That India is the fourth largest economy in the world, uh, one of the fastest rising economies on the planet. You know, they don't need to be condescended to. Sure? Or like, oh, poor you, imagine if someone <laughs> made a joke about India, you wouldn't cope. <laughs> but at the same time, there is this element of going, oh, the great British sense of humour. <laughs> oh, so marvellous. We're famous for our sense of humour. And then I can't believe you guys don't know how much other countries are fucking with you when they go, what's so great about the British sense of humour? And then they go, oh, it's our ability to laugh at ourselves. <laughs> and you're like, fuck you. That is such a... Isn't it so big of us to laugh at ourselves in front of the help? Right? <laughs> You know, I'm in a unique situation where there's not a lot of people I can offend, really. Yeah. They, they brush off my comments so easily. And um, maybe maybe certain pockets of Australia might get triggered, but very few. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people actually coming up. Yeah. One, a lot of people come up and they like to... Um, there's this weird thing where they like to share the Indigenous experience <laughs> and that usually revolves around, oh, you know, I, I fed one once or something. <laughs> 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 It's really, and they think they're connecting with me. They really fucking do. It, and I, I don't even need to make this up, but word, word for word, the amount of people like, so there's this whole fucking stereotype that uh, you have to sit down, be eye level, and you know, speak to Aboriginal elders when you, when you meet a town. The amount of people that I've had come up to me and say, you know what, when I went to Yundamu, I... I sat in the dirt <laughs> yeah. and I spoke with them and they expected me to go fucking right on. What am I meant to fucking say to that? It's the weirdest, most awkward conversation I've had so many times. Yeah. <laughs> I think... Like those fuckers... Next time that someone does that, you should do the thing of just reach across, touch them on the face and go, same. <laughs> it's same. Probably the best reference is those fuckers that go and build huts in Africa on their gap year. Those cunts. Those ones that actually go... and they Relief workers! No, no, no. The, the ones... The ones yeah, those that take pictures of themselves feeding starving children and then use it as their Tinder profile. Those pieces of shit. Those fucking people. That's They're the, the same ones. That's the most specific stereotype I've ever heard. <laughs> they got a purple shirt on. Couple. Yeah. <laughs> Couple. But yeah, this, it's it's um well, yeah, it's they're reaching out. It's interesting as people are trying to be well-meaning and trying to show they care and sometimes get it wrong. So you know. Oh, absolutely. You know. So I should qualify that as well. That like I don't necessarily attack liberalism so much. Is I I always have a rule. I suppose that if I'm going to pull the rug out from under people, I should be standing on it. And so most of the time, I give examples of my fuck ups. Uh, we are celebrating awkwardness a lot. Yeah! Like that's, that's the best part about it. We try this. to celebrate awkwardness by, like, this new show is definitely... There's two points to it. Uh, one of which is, I believe, that political correctness, whilst well-meaning, has a tendency to divide the world into white and other. Mm -hmm. That it normalises whiteness. And that's rude. <laughs> uh, and... That the other point is how can we ever combat bigotry if we never admit to it? That on some level, the the tiniest like racial fuck-ups that we have, we are dobbing each other in on Facebook and so on. Uh, and we are treating that with the same level of venom and judgment as the very real shit that we are... We are living in very racially toxic times mm -hmm. around the world. And I guess... What Craig and I are trying to do is, you know, we, we were very surprised and moved and touched that we, we had no idea what we thought was essentially an hour of audacious stupidity. Uh, we had no idea how much it was going to touch people mm -hmm. personally just because I suppose w all we've done, we haven't really done anything that special, right, is that we just take the way that two friends talk to each other and put it on stage. But what is sad, I suppose is that the dynamic, the chasm that exists between us in our country 
is so vast that what is truly rare to people is a white guy and an indigenous bloke being close enough to do that. That that's like, whoa, we don't, that's rare. Well, add that too in our, com- our sense of humour, our comedy scene is really underdeveloped. Um, television, Yo. film, all that sort of stuff. We're, we're usually, Aboriginal people, Indigenous people, we're usually on as, as the comic relief or the, or the, or the clown or we, we play a stereotype. We're very, there's an there's a Aboriginal uh, actor named Aaron Pedersen who applied for a role in a really shitty TV show called Water Rats. It was just, it, I don't know, what's your Emmerdale? That, that's one of those fucking things. He just went for the role and he's a good actor. He's done a lot of stuff. He walks into the room for the audition and they say, oh no, this character's not indigenous. And he just goes, I know. <laughs> Can I just try? That, and that's where we fucking are. Like, yeah, yeah. Th- 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 it's th- open. Definitely as far as stand-up, it's the same thing. If I'm not up talking about how the time my boomerang fucking broke, the people <laughs> can't compute, <laughs> they can't get their head around it. Tell me about that time though. because I. Can- <laughs> <laughs> see, it's really easy to see why I love oh, the guy, right? Oh. And so tempted to just go, you know what, you call a boomerang, it doesn't work, it's a stick. That's a terrible <laughs> Come fucking on. joke. And it's old as the hills, but yeah, it, and that's, but that's where, yeah. uh, I mean, the biggest, I think we said this in the old show, the biggest uh, Aboriginal comedian was a guy named King Billy Coke Bottle. Oh. He was a fucking Dutch actor. <laughs> he used to, yeah, he used to blackface over radio. This is something that... <laughs> and, how do you even do blackface on radio? He was pretty successful. It's the laziest was... kind of blackface. You can't be bothered. <laughs> Is it what? It's the laziest kind of blackface. You don't even have to do it. Yeah. I know. I can't be bothered. We're actually, we're actually still needing to explain what blackface is in Australia. Yeah, right. that's true. Yeah. It's very much like walking on Uluru. Like, don't paint yourself or your kids black to <laughs> pretend to be something. A, kid, a woman painted her fucking kid black to, for a, for a uh, costume contest. For a, a fairy bo- tale, wasn't it? No, no book, a book review. So it was a come dressed as a book character. There's a big black Fijian footballer named Nick Nad Nui. First of all, not in a book. <laughs> secondly, <laughs> secondly, he fucking won. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to... Eat, we, just socially need to explain in Australia what blackface is because it would yeah. be the same reaction as Uluru. Was how is that racist? Yeah. I don't. I'm not offended by it. How is that right? It's where we are still. Oh but yeah, and we were in Edinburgh at the time, yeah. right? And I was like, well, you know, uh, Australia doesn't have the history of blackface. Uh, that also, uh, the kid is a fan of the guy, and he wants to emulate him. And I like went. How's that racist? But I asked it as if, like, you know, I wanted an answer. I think that might be the difference. Maybe that is the difference of, like, explain something to me, right? If he's a fan and he wants to emulate that guy, has it racist? And Craig, by the way, called it to a fucking T. I mean a T. He goes, you don't understand, mate. It's tomorrow. There's going to be three white people on breakfast radio, on breakfast television in Australia. And there's going to be two white guys and there's going to be, like, one, like, white lefty woman speaking for us. And she's going to be saying something along the lines of maybe you shouldn't do blackface, right? There won't be an Aboriginal person, right, at all. And the two white guys were going, how's that racist? How's that? How's that racist? And she'll go, well, because there's a history of blackface. And then, I promise you, at the end, they'll get the last word of, yeah, but it's not racist. How's that racist? And then the presenter will go, well, I guess we'll never know, right? (laughs) It happened verbatim. (laughs) It happened verbatim. He called it. He said, this is happening within 12 hours, right? And I'm like, come on. And I mean, it was blow by blow. He called it down the line. Because what also people uh, need to realise, we're going to talk about Craig like he's not here for a sec. (laughs) (laughs) Is uh, Craig's not your average open open micer, all right? Craig is a journalist actually in the face of NITV, National Indigenous Television, right? So... Uh, his day job is actually that he is constantly flown to uh, Kalgoorlie and Northwest Australia and so on to report on atrocity after atrocity after atrocity. And he is... a uh, Great source for material. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, you do not want to be writing long-distance jokes with your friend about racial tension after he's just been to report on yet another kid getting killed in custody. <laughs> Because in text, your ideas sound fucking horrible. <laughs> He's like going, oh my God, I hate you in text. You really need to add the... <laughs> it's a projector and it's a big black cock. And no, no, no. I'm like, yeah, no, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
it's been I'm difficult. a comic that needs a lot of context, let's be honest. <laughs> In actual fact, like, I was both... I'm a guy that needs so much context, I need an entire human being to validate me <laughs> before you lot will relax. Like, well, I guess he's, Craig's all right with him, so... <laughs> like, that's... Uh, and so the fact that he called that down the line and people want to believe what they want to believe, you know, people want to believe that you're doing the right thing. And uh, so we met doing the show and it's very interesting, as I said, that people when they approach us and they've listened to the podcast, is this is very rare as well that... Uh, so yeah, like I said, he's not your average open micer just going three years. This is a guy that, you know, he self-produces, he cuts and edits everything himself. It's not like some, you know... It's not some fucking... <coughs> how do I say this without sounding like I'm shitting on white people? <laughs> Fuck it. All right. <laughs> like that's ever held you back. No. I, it's, it's not some fucking, you know, fucking skinny jean cunt on the dole getting up like and doing five minutes a night. And Are you about stuff. to give an elaborate version of he's a good one? <laughs> no. no. Okay. <laughs> I'm just getting conscious. No, 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 no. I'm yeah, talking about like your average open micer is kind of, you know, a bit lazy, entitled. Yeah, yeah. You know, someone starting out in comedy, uh, particularly like, well, in the UK, because it's so much easier to do <laughs> here. Uh, uh, just there's more opportunities. There's lots of shows. There's, sure, know, sure. So there's a there's so when people say like, oh, he's brand new. What the fuck's going on? Why would he work with someone so brand new? And it's it, it, it's not the same. We're dealing with a guy that writes and you know and and, and c has been constructing narrative for for sure. for, for like a, a decade now, and it is also, uh, it really has opened my eyes to, it's, it is strange that people have, I've never experienced anything like this, where people that listen to the show, when they meet us, they really feel like they know us, because literally listeners to the show met him when I did. And they know full well that the way that this has evolved, and we've kind of fallen ass backwards into becoming a double act. We're both completely reluctant about it. Like, I'm everything he fucking hates. <laughs> everything he hates. And, you know, and he talks when Guns N' Roses is on the radio. What the fuck's that, right? Okay. Shut up! Axel sings to the white man, right? <laughs> but we actually, I suppose it's just been incentivized, right? Is that everyone that has seen us work together has said, like, not only is this the best thing they've ever seen me do, but I. You know, it seems to be the objective point of view that this might be the best thing I'll ever get to do. Is that when we're on stage together, you know, let's be honest, he can we cancel out each other's weaknesses. You know, he, he cancels out my weaknesses and vice versa. He's a very likeable, affable, understated, <laughs> humble human being. Yeah. And I'm this. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is, what, your 20th? Yeah, it's my 20th hour. 20th, best reviewed, and um, yeah. Looking forward to doing probably the biggest show. Hopefully, uh, this is my first. <laughs> <laughs> so my best show is his first effort. But that's that's an interesting. So that that's an interesting and unusual dynamic. Just the, the you know, regardless of everything else, uh, sort of a, a new comedian and an and a experienced, a veteran comedian we get called now. Yeah, I was uh, waiting to see together. You were <laughs> well, I can't talk because I'm yeah. I'm more veteran than you are. Yeah, I used so, to look uh, up for you. But it's you know it's it's that's an interesting dynamic dynamic in itself. If it wasn't for any of the other stuff, obviously. I know. But obviously you've got all that. I think comedy is a fantastic way to tackle all this stuff because of because of what you're saying. Go people saying how's that racist? And you know you get the same everywhere with you know why you know why is complaining about. Doctor Who being a woman, why is that sexist? Why are gollywogs racist? Oh, you know, really? all these things. And people, and what? People gollywogs are racist? <laughs> I don't think they have emotions. We still sell them in chemists. <laughs> gollywogs still get sold in chemists in Melbourne. Yeah. Well, but, you know, they do. Yeah. And, uh, they still get sold in the UK. But, but, and, but people, because people don't want to, people don't want to be seen as racist. And yep. people don't think they are racist sometimes, even if they are. And, and, and so you're... It's very difficult to approach those subjects because if you go up to someone and say this is just wrong, then they're going to go, they're going to get defensive and go, why is it wrong? And they say, we've had this for all our life. And My uh, favourite thing about the Doctor Who thing, yeah. though, uh, I know a lot of people get yeah, idiots getting upset about this. But my favourite part, going, it's not as it's not as toxic as everybody's making it out to be. What I'm loving is the people actually really getting upset that they are referring to her as 
Doctor Who when it's the Doctor. Yeah. yeah. The people that get fucking pissed off about that, they couldn't care what sex she is. <laughs> it's the Doctor. It's not Doctor Who. That's that's the best. Oh, part I've been about winding it. today because it's this when your people listen at home, it's just sort of happened while we're doing this podcast. But today, I've, I've been winding up Doctor Who fans all day. <laughs> so I've, <laughs> I've been saying, yeah, it's fine. You've got a female Doctor. There'll never be a male companion though. And then. And then you get people go, well, there was Rory and there was... Yeah, apart from him and apart from this, still come back, there's, you know, because there's fucking hundreds. <laughs> and I go, but Doctor Who will never drive a car. Well, that will never be allowed to drive a car. <laughs> and, they, <I'm laughs> and I know that he's driven a car, because I know a lot about Doctor Who. So it's really good fun, because, you know, and then the occasion one would go, oh, oh you're yeah. winding me up. Yeah. You know, but then, because it's a good, in good humour as well. But it, and, and I'm a fan. Of, I'm a fan of the program myself. But it's really good fun when people get. I mean, that's sort of so trivial in a lot of ways because it's people getting obsessed about something that isn't real. But, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then it's definitely for children. Uh, so <laughs> and I and I and I love the fact that people can get that obsessed about something. But then and then you miss out on the great picture. And I suppose that is also true of, of those childhood associations. A lot of it's very child. A lot of the world is very childish in a bad way. And that's, There's uh, a lot of infantilizing. Yeah, now. yeah, but you know, and so, so, but it's it's about the way of uh, getting this stuff across without d- telling people off. Because, yeah, you know, well, I fall into yeah. that trap a lot. Yeah. So it's you know, it's good that we've got a director, <laughs> and it's good that he's there. But you can tell people off, and then so you know, if you're a double act, the other guy can come in and say. You know, well, it's also his scrutiny forces me to have greater clarity. Uh, you know, that if I uh, have an idea, and then he'll be like. Why? Because look, the last thing, here's the weirdest thing. Here's the th- there's a lot of stuff that's happened that neither of us expected. Uh, one of which was uh, we had a mission statement in Australia of w- all we wanted to do was get Indigenous Aussies and white Aussies in the same room laughing. Right? Pretty easy idea. Yeah? I mean, that's like not that shocking, is it? And like the shit that people wrote that was supposedly progressive yeah. uh, in response to just that very simple, not very worthy or earnest kind of idea of like, oh, why don't you just recreate D-Day? Fucking go to Beirut. Like, whoa! And you're a PC organisation? <laughs> like, it's really like that in your face. And the thing that uh, that we discovered is that, uh, well, I suppose our story in this year's show picks up uh, after that is, for whatever reason, I make black audiences relax. And Craig makes white audiences relax. And I don't know, I suspect it might be because the only kind of white guy that black audiences instinctively, automatically feel free to enjoy is crazy white guy. (laughs) Because they're like, holy fuck, this guy's so white, he gets to be nuts. He gets to be nuts and doesn't wind up homeless or in jail. That's fucking amazing. Look at him! And, you know, you're like a curio. And, uh, or maybe it might be that just uh, there's a sense that I'm definitely not holding anything in, you know? You're never going to leave the room. You're never going to feel like you leave the room and I'm going to all of a sudden change because, uh, you know, it's already so pretty horrifying. <laughs> um, no, but that's the thing too about uh, stand-up for so many years, comedy in Australia revolved around us being, us being the punchline, part of the chorus. Yeah. Yeah. We never felt safe in audiences like this because you'd be sitting at the back and oh wait here it comes yeah the the one of the ah yeah what so one of the things where it really it uh rammed it home to me was when i was in ireland uh my wife's irish and we went and visited her family and uh one of her cousins decides they want to get drunk and tell me all these little jokes these like these little short beat jokes like how do you get a and they were referring to um i think what's the word is it is it traveler traveler parky pikey's pikey yeah yeah Yeah. so she was dropping me all these jokes with the three beats, like how do you get a how do you get a traveller woman pregnant? Like come on the ground, it'll sort fly oh, to take yeah. her uh, Those sort of horrible, really jokes, and they just well, she's telling me these jokes and just cracking up laughing. I'm like, these are just the jokes they used to have about us. Yeah, these are the exact same jokes. And You've so, just changed the ethnicity. Yeah, absolutely, and that was considered indigenous humour. That was our involvement, yeah. and uh, so yeah, trying to get a, a room full of Aboriginal people to come in. Uh, was really fucking difficult. Oh, yeah, because the first time, like, 80 people said that, like, the f- when we first met, this was uh, the year before, 
Uh, and a lot of internationals were saying to me as well, like a lot of the international acts were going, where are all your black people? And I was like, I don't know. I think up near me mum. Because uh, the weird thing is, well, like, it just, it just changes that straight white paradigm a bit. It just takes a little bit of shifting. Because we do, like our media does it, it views the world through whiteness, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and uh, while I was in Perth, I would say my mum lives up in Midland and people used to snicker. And also, it's, uh, I would go to Midland Shopping Centre and there'd be Indigenous folks and white folks walking around and I thought, oh, all right, we've moved on. That was my perspective. And it's not until later that everyone went, no, mate, that's just Midland. It's a ghettoised area. Yeah. Uh, your mum lives up in the hills on the outskirts of that. <laughs> but that's what you're experiencing is not right. And people would snicker and I didn't understand what that meant. And so I then, uh, after meeting Craig, wanted to put on like an all Indigenous audience show because that's the nature of my podcast. And I thought, I'm a pussy if I don't do this, you know, in my own backyard. Yeah. And it was funny because like 80 people said they were coming. And then at the last minute, it was like about 15 people were in the room. And I kind of went, I just realised what happened is a white guy asked you all to be in the same place at the same time. <laughs> and you went, fuck that, I know how that ends. <laughs> Not falling for that shit. Uh, but there is a huge difference, and it's definitely something that the UK circuit doesn't understand, and that is that there is a huge difference between comedy about and comedy for. And every culture, I've yet to encounter a culture or a nationality or an ethnicity or a subculture that doesn't enjoy jokes about themselves. Everyone likes it, right? Yeah. In actual fact, if you're immersed in that culture or subculture or nationality or ethnicity, it's actually your job. And if you don't come up with something... The only thing people don't like is made-up white stereotypes. Right? Uh, yeah. uh, that really often are fucking... No, I'm so curious. far What's, off. Like what? Oh, fuck it. The chicken thing. What's that about? <laughs> Who doesn't love... Like, oh, black people love chicken. Who doesn't love chicken? <laughs> oh, Who's looking at black... What is it? Dave Chappelle does that bit? Oh, you mean like, oh, do white people like look at black people and go, oh, look at him, he loves it. Oh, it's mesmerising. <laughs> Who, what race hates chicken? <laughs> what race goes, we just had something like this. You, you picked us on a bad day as well, by the way, because we've both been on a diet because we were going to a photo shoot yeah. and we fucking <laughs> pigged out on Billy Chicks and gravy before we came here, so we were both a bit... Grumpy as fuck. Before yeah. Too. And so, like, can someone tell me an ethnicity that doesn't eat chicken? So that, that's the thing of, like, that is a made-up white stereotype. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, it's a white kind of stereotype of another of another ethnicity. Yeah, that's where I was confused. I thought you were saying what's a what's a uh, stereotype about white people that I wasn't. Uh, stereotype about white people. Uh, we have ideas about our station. Uh, we think we're the center of the universe. Uh, and these are just true things. <laughs> <laughs> we love chicken. Yeah, we love, love chicken. chicken. <laughs> we love chicken, but we're fucking baffled when other people like it too. <laughs> Wait a minute. I mean, I'm me, and I've got this delicious shit going on. Yet he's like that colour and he's going this same <laughs> same I feel so far, sorry for you, Craig. I can't, I can't. Two months. Two That's months yeah. Is, yeah. I'm me and people feel sorry for him and yeah. then he tells them to get fucked for doing that. Because don't you patronise me, cunts. That's the hour. So you can find your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> It is interesting. Yeah, I mean, we. It's. it's look, <laughs> Sorry. Just go on. Let's go. Uh, no, I just think of how much, like, in the future, I've got to stop sending you to do the negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's like the Eastern States didn't want a bar of us. And then yeah. Craig did go, maybe I should stop sending you to the negotiations. Yeah. Like, of just, you know, exactly opening it with going, oh, you think Melbourne's not racist? <laughs> Brendan, we're trying to get booked at the Melbourne Festival. <laughs> Just talking to a booker for fuck's sake. <laughs> you successfully committed genocide, you cunt. Brendan, please. <laughs> Why is every fucking contract coming back covered in monster energy drink? <laughs> and you writing the word cunt with an X at the end of it. But I, I think what's interesting is that, that a, I think a lot, a lot of comedians certainly in this country find it difficult to talk about A lot of audiences probably find it difficult to, to talk about it. And yet, talking about the, it's such an important subject. I mean, I guess again with with the Australian Indigenous people, it's such and the and the American Indigenous people, it's such an horrific story that the only way maybe to, for the country to cope with it is to 
try and pretend it didn't happen. You know, you, otherwise you've got to. But I don't know. I mean, it's the, the German, uh, the Germans acknowledge what they did, and they did, yeah. they did, and they like, you know, they had like. Well, a is that totally true? I heard it wasn't taught in the curriculum in schools now. Like, the, they don't go into great detail. Well, in Germany, yeah. Oh, they do. Yeah, they do. I and so. in South Africa, they had like uh, an entire like government agency that was of acknowledgement. Yeah. And I guess that's kind of what we try and do is acknowledgement and then awkward. And then from that, the comedy comes. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we basically we, uh, celebrate... We ain't, we're awkward. not planning to solve shit, though. Yeah. <laughs> we really... Let's be perfectly clear. Exactly. His mum's scrubbing floors and I spent the last three years at the Free Fringe begging for cash. <laughs> if this makes us more marketable, fucking have at it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking come on. No one's exactly lining up fucking for the... Wait, the 46-year-old white man is bringing another hour to Edinburgh? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 2016 real finalist, you say? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We have to accept that together, like, we're, we are better off together. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. And it's, it's difficult being in a double act. I've done a couple. <laughs> That's what we wanted to yeah. ask you as well. What happened to the other guys? Oh, uh, I shared. They weren't, they weren't so good for me, so I, I shared them. Oh, that's I awesome. You have no idea, do you? <laughs> you have no idea who the fuck he is at all. <laughs> That's fantastic. I've got a good idea, yes. you got a good idea, do you? <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> What's his surname? <tonight? laughs> I know What's Richard his... Herring is. Don't be a dickhead. Oh, him. okay. <laughs> what was the name of his TV show? The Richard Herring Show? <laughs> <laughs> you barely have been alive when what? I was on uh, TV. Well, this is awesome. You know what? Hey, you've got your emergency questions. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Let's go with what Craig knows about Richard. Uh, so, what was the name of the? Okay, what was the name of his first double act partner? That uh, is your mic off. <laughs> no, no, I was just admiring the fact that you felt you needed to grandstand a bit more. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good because there's not been enough Brendan Burns already. Let's keep going. <laughs> You needed him to win. You needed him to win. That was an applause break too. <laughs> that was first of the day. <laughs> Even Robert Webb didn't get that shit. <laughs> Even yeah. when he talked about his mum dying, that wasn't enough. Yeah. And he's no, one, no one applauded something. that, did they? Uh, <laughs> For some reason. Uh, no, it's, it's tricky being in it. I've done a couple of double acts. I've done a few double acts. And this is a sort of double act. Wait, 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 wait. Let's not let this cut off the hook. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's what good was... It's good that he's never heard of the guy. I'm actually quite curious about this. He's not a well-known guy, the other guy. <laughs> no, he's not. So he's he's not. not. Wait, okay. You know who he is, right? I, I was actually going to ask how it ended. With who? Well, With who? Say I'm, the name. Because I'm already... Cause well, I'm already he's not going to appear. Because I'm already playing my name. escape if Kesh ever noticed, Richard. I'm trying to... What's the best way to get out of a He's double act? He's not Beetlejuice, for fuck's sake. Just let it grind. You say Stuart Lee three times. <laughs> <laughs> I've been living in the railway set. Here comes some dry rhythm. And then I'm going to telegraph my callbacks. At the very beginning, later on, I'm going to make a joke like this. And when I make that joke like that, everyone's going to go nuts and act like I fucking get comedy. Why only I can comprehend Stuart Lee. Of course you comprehend him. He explains everything he fucking does. <laughs> Fuck, do you know Stuart Lee? Yeah. <laughs> He dropped you a few clues. Uh, it's uh, a couple of clues. We we would we did it by the time you had done done a double act with Brendan as long as I did with Stuart. Brendan would have been dead for five years. So yeah. it's, it's oh my death is not the, going to be slow. That's the one. That's it's going to be. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I, I guarantee my final words will be something along the lines of ah. <laughs> 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 I hope my final words are 
And that's everything I reckon. <laughs> I actually want my gravestone yeah. to read, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> dot, 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 on our way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so. I would be surprised if there was writing not, on the back of yours as well. Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not possible. There will be, there can't be a final word because you'll always come in with something. Else. No, I, always <laughs> re- I always fucking regret missing something. <laughs> There'll be something else after. Uh, it's, it's, a t- it's a tough thing, I think. And there, there are some double acts who are just like a really good friends and f- friends for life. And there are some double acts who hate each other. And I've not been in either of those, I think. <laughs> it's fair to say. But it's, it's, it's a difficult thing because if, it if it starts as a friendship, then it turns into like a, a business thing. And yeah. you're then in each other's pockets. And like you were saying backstage, people are trying to... And you've, you've already experienced, I think, people are trying... To divide you, they're trying to say, "Oh, one of you's funding the other," and then you know they'll That's say to you. That's what we're going to ask your advice say, on. Or well, people treat it like, uh, like chips. Yeah, the Chicago Highway Police. Yeah, like everyone picks a favorite. Yeah, and then they often like will like you see when people upload like comedians appearing on a radio show on YouTube, and they will say Bill Burr versus Jim Jeffries, and then you listen to it, and it's two guys on a radio show making each other laugh. Yeah. And you're going, what are you talking about? Versus. And I can understand maybe why that happens in the UK because you, the, first of all, if that panel show thing yeah. of like, and some of them I can't watch because literally you can see they're not listening to each other or enjoying each other. They are literally just trying to get their shit in. Yeah. And to me that, you know, and, and, and I know some comics as well that if you get a laugh on stage while they're on stage, they're like, they feel like it's been robbed of them. But to me, that's like preferring masturbation to sex. <laughs> you know, I like being an audience member. I enjoy being made to laugh. And maybe it's the Perth thing and it's from miles away and comedy was hard, so I like being around funny people. But, uh, there are different types of comedians. And I've, I've always, I was always a comedy fan and I love p- people who make me laugh. And I don't feel intimidated by it or scared by it or compare myself to thinking, oh, you know, they're doing better. I just think, brilliant, someone's being funny and someone's... Yes! Yeah. So, but uh, there's a comedians who can't bear to be not. Oh the my god! Person. You see early episodes of Mock the Week, and Frankie, Frankie Boyle and Russell Howard are like just looking at their notes the entire time, like not even. Yeah. And I'm like, you're surrounded by really great comic talent. Like, this is you know, this is being made to laugh is awesome. Yeah. What's wrong with you? But hopefully in a double act, <laughs> should be, there should be something that you find funny about each other and that should be, and that's the thing, I think it's, it's just keeping the balance, you know, and whatever the balance is and sometimes the balance is an imbalance and some, you know, in certain ways, but it's like you say, I think it's, it's about complimenting each other. So if one, you know, like, what, I think you're exactly right if you say this, uh, that he covers up my weakness and I, he covers, and I cover up his weakness. Oh, there was one sort of show where I tried to match Brendan's energy once. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I had to do laps in the pool the next day just, <laughs> just to fucking recover. I was yeah. I just tried too hard because yeah, when you're not foc- when you're stressed out and trying to compete and all the rest yeah. of it, I was just terrified of him because he's done so much. Yeah, and I was even uh, one year less experienced than what I am now, and uh, yeah, I get that competitive <laughs> side of things, yeah. but th- at the same time, when we can both be share a stage. And switch off and actually just enjoy watching the other one. They're the fucking best nights ever. That is true. It's like some of the... Uh, and I guess I got lucky as well. Like I, I, um, I've been in a double act with a pro wrestler called Colt Cabana. By <laughs> three people. Yeah, right. I would have thought it was a huge crossover. We're not a wrestling crowd. No. <laughs> no. We like Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a Doctor Who fan, you'd really like indie wrestling. It's fucking bizarre. <laughs> Doctor Who's not as far-fetched. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I saw Cabana wrestle a robot once. <laughs> and it's so funny. He's great because he's a physical comedian, basically, when he wrestles. It's, it's funny that like, people watch the WWE and they think, oh, that's wrestling. And then I take him to an indie show. And every comic I ever take to an indie show, wrestling show, they go, oh, I get it. Right. This is the difference between like, the WWE is live at the Apollo and indie wrestling is a Doug Stanhope gig. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Like this is like, it's as, it's as diverse as stand up. And the first year that I was working with Colt, um, sometimes I would talk a bit long and you know, and he'd get very mad and he'd go like, what the fuck? And then I kind of, I realized like, oh right, as a pro wrestler, you honestly think that if you're not doing anything, everyone's looking at you. 
and everyone's looking at you going, oh, you know, no one when you're not speaking on stage with a couple of people, no one ever looks at the guy not speaking and goes, oh, he's fucking bombing. <laughs> Look at him. He's doing nothing. He's bombing. He's dying on his ass. Right? You just, you're just being on stage. You just have to be another audience member. And I, and I had to adapt because he felt like because I was a veteran that I was taking liberties. Yeah. Uh, like, like a guy would in the wrestling ring. Sure. Actually, he would, you know, guys that have been going a while are supposed to take care of you. Uh, but sometimes guys take liberty and, and they actually beat the shit out of you and they don't sell anything and they make you look like shit. Uh, uh, selling means, uh, you know, when someone throws a punch, you act hurt, right? And so you make their, their moves look good by selling. And some people don't sell on stage. For instance, you know, in uh, Mock the Week, those guys writing those notes, not laughing, not enjoying themselves, they're not selling. Yeah. And so I had to start afresh and just throw out the... You know, throughout everything I kind of knew, working with Cabana on stage of, again, I kind of treat it like a wrestling match in that it's actually not a competition, it's a dance. And you're cooperating. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, yeah, he's right. If Like when he's up there like tearing the roof off or when like we've got those bits where it's just beat, 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 beat and we're firing on all cylinders... It's, uh, it's some of the most rewarding and, you know, uh, 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 it's going to sound douchey. It's going to sound douchey and woke. Like everything else? Huh? Like everything else? Oh. Like everything else? All right. <laughs> Only he can do that, mate. <laughs> wait, wait, let's hear him out. What, if, what are you going to say? No? No. <laughs> that was the shortest double act I've ever seen. Mate. Yeah, right? <laughs> Come on, mate. It's not a competition. It's a dance. I was selling for you, motherfucker. You tanked. Uh, it, okay. When... Wait, hang on. How often do people get heckled during your podcast? Yeah, I know. I just... I, I have that effect on people. <laughs> British that people that really do feel like that one needs taken down yeah. a peg. <laughs> that one needs taken down a peg. It does. Seems... Seems like, you know what, I was telling, trying to explain this to him as well. Like, if I have like a white English cleaner, uh, I'm middle class, right? If I have a white English cleaner, like, that bloke doesn't think he works for me. I oh, shit you not. Like, he'll turn up like, <laughs> he'll fucking go, sorry, mate, fucking, uh, you know, I went got hammered last night. I'm like, we're not mates, motherfucker. <laughs> but there is that kind of element of, you know, he's a fucking convict. He really knows our dynamic. And I'm like, I fucking pay you, asshole. <laughs> See, you don't like it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, a uh, Jamali Mannix, right? Great uh, British comic, uh, Jamaican British dude. He like asked me on the show. He said, "All right, so you talk a lot about the black-white dynamic in Australia." He goes, "Did you hate Aboriginal people growing up?" And I was like, "No, no, I didn't. But I was frightened of them, right? I was frightened of them. And there's something." Ugh. <laughs> How do I say this without sounding so icky? <laughs> You're right, by the way. Uh, <laughs> there's something about getting black Australians and white Australians in the same room together. Look, the only really skill set I've got, the only thing I've ever been very good at is making taboos funny, solving puzzles of taboos. Right? Whenever a taboo pops its head up, generally, and probably one of the reasons why I've been so grossly unsuccessful in this business, <laughs> is I will try and solve the puzzle of how do you, how do you pick that apart? How do you broach that? Uh, and making awkward shit funny. I'm not the best joke writer in the world. I'm not the most charismatic bloke. I'm definitely not immediately likeable. Uh, and I don't do set up punchline or whatever. I can just make awkward shit funny. And so being raised in an environment, and I'm, I'm a product of that environment, no matter how much, I, how worldly I want to tell myself I am, right? Uh, and He's literally the only person who tells him that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is... Having white Australians and indigenous Australians in the same room laughing and laughing at jokes that I'm doing about the racial tension between us. Like, modern catharsis, I think, is bastardised and overused. I think it actually means, like, quick fix. But feeling that catharsis in the laughs, eh, it's kind of one of the few times you don't feel like... Like, this is a very selfish art form, right? It's very, very me, me, me. Like, fucking, you know, it's not the product of good parenting. As you were saying, it's fucking love from strangers. It's, it's you know, it's stripping. It's prostitution. Uh, 
I just say, comics don't like hearing that, but it fucking is. Paul Provenza, that he talked me into it. I was like, what's my art? And I'm there telling my truth. And he goes, what do you do on stage? And I said, well, I, what, what do you mean? And he goes, well, when an audience comes along, what do you do? And I said, well, I tell jokes. And he goes, well, what do, what do they do? And he goes, they laugh. And he goes, what's laughter? Is it, is it, is it, is it a release? <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, and then what do you get in return? I said, love. <laughs> And they're going, do people confuse that release with love? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, you're a prostitute. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, a little bit. Uh, and so, I don't know, it's one of the few times that you don't feel like quite such a pointless human being. <laughs> LAUGHTER Really? Nothing? You got nothing? I mean, that was the biggest lob I've thrown you yet. The crowd laughing stepped on anything I was going to say. <laughs> but with a double act, I think the thing is, and you've got it because you, you do have a, an ego and you do want to be the best at what you do, but it's, it's about understanding that any laugh for either of you is a laugh for you. Yes! Right, and so I think your double act goes wrong when you're genuinely trying to... You know, you can, you, you're pretending to try and best each other, but if you're genuinely <laughs> trying to best each other, if one of you wants to get the laugh and thinks the laugh's for me, then you're not getting it. So it's a kind of, it's, that's why I think a lot, in those Mock the Week things, there's a lot of people who are solo stand-ups who are used to being solo stand-ups who just get the laugh for themselves. They don't know how to work with other people. Yeah. And so, and then actually, you know, setting something up for someone else, even though, even if people are thinking, oh God, he got him there. You've set it up on purpose, known you're going to get big laugh, known you're going to be, the, you're going to take the fall. Yeah. And, and by the way, the one time I wanted him to do it, he fucking, <laughs> he gave me nothing. Which is, is funny in itself. <laughs> they got what they wanted out of it, so I didn't need to, I didn't need to add any more. <laughs> hey, look, uh, I live in the countryside now. I've got to get a train home, so uh, I. Uh, do you really? <laughs> yeah. Where do you live? I'm living in Hart. Well, I'm living with my in-laws at the moment in Hertfordshire. Is that? It's not is that, far away. Is that M40? Uh, it's no, it's more uh, A1. Oh, we're no good to you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's been very interesting talking to you. Didn't get a single emergency question in, and that is a success. That's like that's like a minute and just a minute. That is uh, so. Uh, Notice how white that high five was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was what was why about? <laughs> Oh. No, you got one. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if this podcast will go out before Edinburgh, but if it does oh! go out before Edinburgh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Where are you on in so Edinburgh? Where were sell you on in tickets? Edinburgh? <laughs> <laughs> fucking Robert fucking Webb. <laughs> He's got two fucking series in a book. Fucking. He doesn't need his to go out fast. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter with his. He, these his fucking books Oxbridge cunts, mate. Them. These fucking. <laughs> these Oxbridge cunts. They're out to get us. Us? Yeah, uh, us. <laughs> us. Us. I hope you guys will be on tour in any case. But we, uh, yeah, we're hoping the to... The show's called Race Off. Uh, yeah, it's at the Girl of Balloon at 6.45. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, there's kind of rumblings of taking it elsewhere. Yeah, good. Eastern states in Australia, not so much. No. Oh, my God. Hang on. Can we leave on one thing? Yeah. You've got to tell him... The, uh, the the underbelly story uh, the other night at the preview. Oh, okay. Um, do we have time? Okay, well, there's this whole period. If you do uh, pass the word How long is it going to take? <laughs> Less than anything he okay, said. <laughs> if I feel I should let you say something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, if you do intend to pass the word on and tell people, well, come yourself to come see the show, uh, there's a whole section where we, we address... Socially awkward moments. Uh, we actually warn people for about 10 minutes that if you feel anything, you become enlightened and, uh, you know, we've hit a nerve and you want to express it to us, uh, don't. <laughs> Leave us the fuck alone. Do not come up to us after the show. I have a bit about people being one sixteenth of uh, Indigenous being anything, really. And uh, on our very first... After listening yeah. to it for 15 minutes... It's uh, very strange how people treat us like their intermediary vessel. A lady decided to come up and express 
absolutely everything I asked her not to yeah. after the show, as well as telling me that she preferred me over you. Yeah. Doing, the, doing the split thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, uh, she goes, makes a beeline for me first, and she goes, I think, we're, by the way, bearing in mind, we're under the London eye at the time. And she goes, I think you need to understand your audience better. Right? And she goes, because you kept talking, you kept on trying to contextualise your dynamic for the UK. She goes, I'm Australian. <laughs> we're in the UK we're under the London eye and she goes well I don't really know what you two are talking about I think it must be a West Australian thing because <laughs> we're from the eastern states and I haven't heard any of these racial slurs you've said and I was like well I imagine no one's yelled them at you from a car <laughs> but also I kind of like had to go after it because we've got this whole section on the fact that the number one cheese in Australia is called coon it is and it's spelt right and, and she goes, I've never heard these slurs. And I was like, you've never heard of coon cheese, the number one cheese in your supermarket right now? And she's like, oh, well, right. And then, <laughs> so she's done with me, right? <laughs> and then she makes a beeline for Craig. Um, and, yeah, basically this is – we're, we're burning material, by the way. Hey? We're burning material, by the way. <laughs> I'm just a little conscious Are we going to put – no, we're not putting her on the show. Fuck her. <laughs> Uh, she basically said that she uh, had an issue with me using these slurs that I use and that we shouldn't talk about it because uh, she was uh, one sixteenth. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be dealing with a lot of those fuckers over the next couple of months. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Because <laughs> he does have a whole thing about being yeah, yeah. one sixteenth yeah. and those cunts. And then, like, we were immediately, like, just, ugh, you know what? I bet when you get pulled over by the cops, you're those other 15th, 16th <laughs> real fucking fast, aren't you? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please give it up. Richard Herring, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, great quarter mate. Fantastic, Jacko. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you start again? Cheers. Yeah, see you. One, one more week for recording. Come next week. See you. How'd you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>